Hello again, this is chapter 4 and we are looking into the while loop. So uh, let's have a look into this. Um, as we've seen previously, the for each loop, um, one of the things it does is it always repeats the loop body for each bit, um, each um, object in the collection. So <coughs> uh, sometimes it's, you don't necessarily want to find it. For example, if you're um, searching for something, um, if you had a specific list you were searching in, um, you once you found that particular item you were searching for, then you might not need to search for the rest through the rest of the list. However, in a for each loop, you have to search the entire collection. That's one of the things um, with it. Um, one of the things we use a while loop for is searching, and we can uh, implement it so that when we find something, we can stop searching. Um, the basic syntax, syntax in um, a while loop is while uh, a certain condition is true, then do something. Uh, and so we're going to look at that now. So let's have a look at the Java pseudocode for the while loop. Um, again, it's um, similar to the for each loop in um, in respect that it needs a um, and then it needs braces um, at the start and end of the loop body. Um, so while a certain condition occurs, um, then we will always run through this uh, loop body um, in here. Um, the condition is a boolean type test. Um, we're in the parentheses there, so similar to the if statement which we've come across previously. So we're not searching for a specific um, through a specific collection here. Um, it's just a boolean test. Um, pseudocode written in English. Uh, while we wish to continue, do the things in the loop body. So while something happens or while a certain condition um, is true, then do the things in the loop body. So the elements of a while loop, the bits that we need, um, we need to create an index variable uh, and we must express the condition correctly. Now this is where we may encounter some infinite loops if we don't set this up correctly. So we've got to express our um, Boolean condition carefully um, and we need to consider it very uh, closely. Um, rather than before where we're searching through a specific collection, we now need to fetch the element um, by each um, element index. Now, uh, you've seen how to um, get um, an element at a certain index before where we've used um, the previous methods to do this. So you specify an element number and then you'll get that um, the correct element back. Um, after each time, after each um, element we, cre we, um, we get from the array list, we then need to implement the index um, explicitly. So let's have a look at um, a while loop for listing all the files. Now, this while loop here is not going to stop when it uh, finds the file. This is um, this is just an example of listing all files. So this does exactly the same as the previous um, for each um, loop, but uh, it just does it using a while loop. So a couple of things to note. First of all, um, first of all, we've got this index here, which must be created each time. Int index equals zero. So that starts um, at the, uh, the start of the index there. Um, or at the start of the array list there. Um, we've then got a while loop here um, and our open and close parentheses there. Um, our boolean statement in this particular instance is index is less than files.size. So if you remember the files.size um, is taken from, it's an external method call um, using the files variable which is a, um, a, a variable of type array list. Um, if we go into that, you'll see that um, if you go into the API of ArrayList, you'll see that if I have a quick search for size, there it is there, you'll see um, that that will return the elements, uh, returns the number of elements in the list. Okay, so that's the Boolean expression. So while that's true, um, while effectively we're going, uh, we're going through all of the files, then do the uh, do the while loop body, and the while loop body is between those two braces there. It's between that brace there and that brace there. So everything will get done there each time the while body is executed. So um, the first time round the index is zero. So the first time round uh, the index is zero. So let's just see what happens here. So string file name equals files dot get index. So we're creating a temporary variable, creating a temporary variable called string file name. Um, we then go in and 
use the files um, object again, the array list, and use the get method. So if we look at our array list get method, we'll see that it returns the element at a specified it returns the element at a specified position in the list. So in our case it's a string. So string file name equals files dot gets index using um, the index at the moment which is zero. So this at the moment is zero. You can replace that index word with the word zero. Um, we'll then do system dot out dot print line file name which at the moment is um, the um, uh, the uh, file name or the element um, at zero. Um, and then once that's printed out um, then we'll do an index plus plus. Now index plus plus um, is a shorthand way of writing, if you haven't seen it before, it's a shorthand way of writing this. Index equals index plus index semicolon. That is exactly the same. That is exactly the same as index plus plus. So that's the shorthand um, method of it. Sorry, that is not index plus index. Index plus one. My apologies. Index equals index plus one. Okay, so that just um, increments the index by one each time. Okay. Trying to move this. I can stay there. Um, so that's our list all files using the um, index. We can also do a while loop doing a simple search. So this one here um, is a search. Now again, this particular um, method won't stop searching once it's found the search. We're going to look at that one in a second. This is just to give you the basic idea of uh, what a search might look like. Um, so things are starting to get a little more complicated now, but don't panic. It's all the same. Uh, it's all the same uh, considerations. Um, so let's have a look at this again. We've got our um, method title which is a fairly straightforward one here um, and takes a parameter um, of a single string which we're going to call lost track um, the, the pseudocode at the bottom for this before I go into this says this um, while the value of index is less than the size of a collection see if each file name contains a given string so what we're doing is much looking for a specific string um, within the file name for example if you want to learn, search for L E L in um, one of the strings called Elvis, then you would you would find that. So that's that's what we're doing here. Um, again, we set up our index um, equals naught, which is needed for each while loop, um, and then we create our um, boolean statement, which is index is less than file size as previously. What we do then is we um, we get that file name as we did previously, so there's no change so far in the previous method, but after this we change. So what we say now, and this is using your previous, um, previously learnt um, file um, if statements, if file name dot contains lost track. So let's just break down that section there. So first of all, file name is a type string. So if you have a type string, you can use certain method calls. If you want to look at those method calls, we have to look up in the API. So let's have a look at API. Click in the side there, do a search for string, go through some of this stuff, and we'll see string there. Click on string, and if we scroll down, we will see the contains method. So this returns true if and only if this string contains the specified sequence of character values. So it will return true if it, a certain string is within that string. So what we do is we look at the, um, the, the file name and um, say it was Elvis1. Um, if Elvis1 contains the, the certain track, so in our case we're looking at to contain the word EL. So if Elvis contains EL, um, then if that returns true, then we will do that statement there. If it's false, um, then we we don't do that statement and we'll just jump straight to the index um, plus plus um, part of the method. Um, whether we whether it is true or not, we will always go to that index plus plus um, and then go back around again. So then next time around it will be index equals one, and then we'll go through the method uh, go through the while loop again. Method equals two and so on and so forth um, until 
the method um, is um, un until the collection has already goes all the way through um, and um, it's the index becomes equal to the actual size. Okay, so that's the simple search there. So as we discussed previously, um, search um, using while um, you can return for both success and failure. So failure means you need to go through all of the items, whereas success um, is it's found and you only need to go through um, until you've actually found it. So there's two things we have to consider here. First of all, we have to make sure that there's still files to check. So that's why we use the Boolean statement index is greater or equal to files.size. Um, we also need to see if it's been found or not. So what we can do is we can introduce a variable, a Boolean variable um, called found. Um, and then we'll say, well, that's not equal to true, um, then keep searching. So here is a method which I've called um, clever while search. So again, it's similar to the previous one. Um, we've got a, a string search string, um, which we called um, a lost string, I think we called last time. Um, let's just highlight that there. So that's the search string we're going to be looking for. That's the parameter that's passed to this method. Once again, we set up our um, index as zero. Um, however, we've got another variable which we've introduced now called found. Um, we set that up for false. We then, if you notice, we've got a little and in there, which you've seen ands before. Uh, and so what we do is we effectively have two Boolean statements, that one and that one. So what we'll say is while the index is less than the files.size and um, not found, do something. So let's have a look at what we do. Um, again, we go um, and use the get method um, from the array list, the files array list, to actually get our um, file name. Um, so we've got a, a, a string uh, file name. Um, we then use the um, if statement again, if file.contain search string. Um, and then if it does, we'll do a system.out.print line. But then the main difference between this method and the previous method was we do a found equals true. Uh, once found equals true, um, then effectively, um, once found equals true, um, then this and um, up here um, is not true, is false. So once that becomes false, then the while loop will stop. Um, this again is slightly different to the previous one because we're going to have an else statement in here. Um, it's either going to be found or it's not going to be found. So if it's not going to be found, then we're going to increment index by one each time. Uh, but if it is found, um, then we won't need to go and do that because the while loop will already be done. So it's, it's pointless uh, going in there again. So um, here our pseudocode is while the value of index is less than the size of the collection and the value of found is not equal to true, see if each file name contains a given string. So that's the pseudocode for that. So, uh, just finishing off then, um, just comparing the, uh, the two uh, for each's and while's. Um, the for each is probably easier to understand and more straightforward, you're just searching a collection. Um, and one of the main things is it's, it's guaranteed to stop. Um, a while loop um, is good because we don't have to process the whole collection um, and doesn't specifically have to be used with a collection as well. We can use while loops for m many other things. Um, so if you wanted to count a load of numbers, then you can just use a while loop. Um, so it doesn't just have to be used for a collection. One of the beauties is when you found it, you can um, uh, you can stop searching at that point. But one of the main main problems and something you may find is this infinite loop. Um, so if you do if you did for example while index is greater than zero, um, and then just keep incrementing index, then that just carry on forever and be an infinite loop. Um, just a quick note on searches. Um, we've we use the dot contains um, method in our search, and that can that was uh, useful because we can use a, a sort of a subset of the string, so a, a substring we can search for. If we'd have used the equals um, method, um, you'd have seen that it would have had to be absolutely spot on and perfect, um, and we couldn't have used the the equals equals um, because that actually compares objects. So when you're comparing um, strings 
Um, you don't want you're not comparing the specific object, and we'll see later that comparing objects and the dot um, so the equals equals for comparing objects and dot equals which compares values are very very different things. Um, so for example, you can have an object which which had a string in it, um, but if you if that object equals another object, that's totally different to just having doesn't uh, a string equal another string. Okay, so um, just a memory tip there. Um, the equals equals looks a bit like an arrow. Uh, more than the equals does, and uh, when we when we think about objects, um, we we think about references and um, and arrows. Um, so uh, that's how we that's how we compare objects by using the equals equals. But if we want to compare compare um, specific values, um, then we use the dot equals. Okay. So any questions on that, and we'll cover that in the lesson. Some exercises for you there for music organizer version two.